Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video. I'm Anya and I'm Brandon and we have traveled to almost 50 countries together and we've lived in nine countries so we're kind of serial expats and we have a lot of experience living in other countries and today we're going to talk about Valencia which is a place where we've lived pretty much the majority of 2022 for a year and there's many people who want to move to Valencia at the moment it's quite a hot spot for expats and foreigners in general and today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Valencia and also what we wish we would have known a little bit before moving there. Before we start, we just wanted to make a little disclaimer here. Of course, we know that our pros, our cons are going to be completely different than everybody else's. It depends on who you are, whether you have a family, depending on what your reason for moving there is, if you're retired, we know that. So don't get mad at us. You can disagree and you can let us know in the comments what you consider your pros and cons and you can let us know if you agree or disagree with us but just to let you know ahead of time yeah, don't get too mad at us <laughs> so we're gonna start with the pros our first pro is that Valencia is beautiful there's no denying that it's a beautiful city to live in one of the most beautiful ones we probably lived in the old center is super stunning the old buildings look awesome and you have the old market hall Coliseum. all these little streets yeah the um, bowling that looks like a, a coliseum speaking of which we do have a video about valencia if you want to see what it looks like you should check it out but basically it's just really nice to walk around you have the park where you can spend a lot of outdoorsy time there's a city of arts and science that's something that i've never seen anywhere else in the world there's a lot of things to see and it's just very enjoyable to walk around and also live in such a beautiful place. So the next thing we want to mention is the supermarkets. So this may seem like a kind of strange thing to mention, I guess. This is something that we definitely take into consideration when we live in a new place because we have lived in the past in Germany, in Budapest, and we've been to a lot of European cities and stayed there. And in comparison, the grocery stores are really nice in Spain. There, there's a lot of them. The area we used to live, there was like seven within walking distance. They're yeah. really clean. Spacious. They're, yeah, they're spacious, they're affordable. And that was definitely a, a big pro for us. Maybe if you're from America, you're, you'd already be used to these massive grocery stores, even maybe in some places in the It'd UK too. be way bigger too. in America. You can't yeah. compare it with North America. No, and even the selection, but like the selection compared to maybe other places in Europe, and the price is, is very good. And again, yeah, nice, clean. So that was definitely a big pro for us. The next pro is the healthcare. And that kind of applies to all of Spain. The healthcare in Spain is really great, especially the private insurance that we had was very affordable. Nothing compared to North American prices. We only paid around 50 euros. Um, and that included everything. Uh, including cancer care and everything. So you don't have to be worried and that's something that's very important when you're an expat in a foreign country. And it was also easy to find English speaking doctors, at least with our insurance. We didn't really need to use it, luckily, but it's very good to have and very good to know that you can get really good private insurance. And also the public insurance is supposed to be very good. I have a friend who had surgery on public insurance and it was all really good. So that's not something you need to be worried about when you come to Spain or also Valencia. And another thing that we didn't do actually have experience with is the veterinary care, which was amazing in Valencia. We also went to some other vets in Madrid. Yeah, one in Madrid and another one, two in Valencia, one in Madrid, because we do have a cat. Her name is Cherry. And she's an elderly cat, who's, she's 18 and she does have some problems. So she's gone to nine, not nine vets, to multiple vets in nine countries like in her life. Therefore, we've had a lot of experience with vets and we can honestly say that the vets in um, Spain and especially in Valencia so were the best ones we've ever dealt with. So caring, they would take a lot of time. So if you do have pets, and you're moving to Spain or specifically Valencia, I think you don't have to be worried. There is great care, they're also affordable. And yeah, if you have a dog, there's a the big park and everything. There's a lot of outdoorsy space, but when it comes to vet care, Valencia is really, really good. So another big pro, which is definitely gonna be a pro for a lot of people, especially if you are coming from North America or maybe UK, I mean, any part of Europe really, it's safety. So Valencia, I would say, is a very safe city overall. Yeah. You don't have to worry about uh, gun violence or even any kind of like weapon violence, anything serious like that. Like 
there's some petty crime here that we've <laughs> heard about before, like stealing and whatever, but it's not really that common, I would say. We've personally never experienced it. And no. we never felt unsafe going no. out at any time of the day, at night. If you have a family and uh, you're worried about that, you're worried about your kids, I would definitely say that this is not something we really need to worry about. No. Overall, it felt really, really safe and we never felt in danger in the entire year that we lived there. Another thing we also liked about living in Valencia was the language that applies to all of Spain. We have the freedom to pretty much live anywhere in Europe. So for us, it was very nice to be able to speak Spanish. We don't speak it very well, but it's easier to learn than other languages for a person from a Romance language background or Germanic background. So that was really nice. And also a lot of people I think are a bit worried about Valencia specifically because they do speak Valenciano there. But I don't think we ever really came across it too much. Obviously there's um, signs in Valenciano and I think the schools are in Valenciano too. I feel like there was never a moment where somebody wouldn't speak Spanish to us or where that was even an issue where we even had to think about that and I know that in Barcelona for example that is an issue for people because a lot of people want to speak Catalan there but in Valencia it was not an issue at all you can speak Spanish with everyone I wouldn't necessarily say that the level of English in Spain or well, Valencia in particular is that high maybe no. compared to other countries so but it makes you learn Spanish yeah then. you will be in situations maybe where your waiter or whoever may not speak English but if you learn even just the basics of Spanish then your life will be much much easier and You'll people are very nice too they actually yeah. like they always wait and try and help you and yeah. want to talk to you yeah overall everybody was very friendly and stuff so I don't think that's really something to worry about another major pro and this is probably one of the main reasons people move to Spain is the relaxed atmosphere for just life in general so for families for retired people I think that's the kind of thing that you move to Spain for like you always see people no matter what time of day kind of just relaxing laying on the beach or having a drink even at noon yeah. yeah it's a very relaxed lifestyle so if that's what you're looking for it definitely has that it is a city but it's not this big hustling bustling kind of city uh, like you know any big metropolis in america or even other parts of spain madrid, or europe yeah madrid's yeah. more busy yeah it's much more relaxed and Yes, if you're looking for that lifestyle, it's perfect for that. Yeah, and also the food was very good in Valencia or in Spain in general, but um, there was lots of restaurants we liked in Valencia. Mm -hmm. It's affordable. Also having a glass of wine is affordable. And um, what we really liked in Valencia or in Spain in general is the fact that there's um, Latin American food. It's not something that's very common in um, Europe or mm -hmm. places outside of Latin America, apart from maybe LA and Maybe other in places the States. In America, yeah. yeah, but we loved arepas and empanadas, and that's something that's not available in many places, and that was really awesome. Yeah, maybe some of the international food besides Latin American food is lacking a little bit. Yeah. But there are uh, Asian grocery stores, foreign grocery stores, pretty much everywhere in the city, surprisingly. Yeah, there's and, a really big Asian grocery store, which was also nice. Yeah, so if you're looking to just maybe make some of that stuff at home, it sometimes is easier than, than finding it. But yeah, still overall, really good food selection, I think. So now, for warning, we are going to start with the cons. So of course, some of these might be a little controversial. People are 100% going to disagree on some of these things, especially with our first one here. So we kind of have two cons that, for me, go hand in hand, I would yeah. say. The climate. Of course, a lot of people moved to Valencia for the climate, but for us, that was something that was something we had to consider a con, because that leads to our next point. The housing, specifically in Valencia, is not the best. The quality of housing isn't great. So just for an example, the house that we lived in almost felt like a shell of a place. The walls were really thin the heat gets trapped inside and then same with the cold there's no insulation at all and this wasn't just something that we experienced we we're in multiple facebook groups and this is something that's well known mm -hmm. just the summer that we were there the weather would go anywhere from low 30s uh, celsius to upwards of almost 40 degrees celsius which is really hot and in our house it was just like that too we we basically baked alive so we had to buy an air conditioning unit just to survive and also for the winter it would get cold and we had to buy our own heater as well. It was just too cold 
because of the bad housing mm -hmm. or the quality of the housing it was the same basically at one point the uh, inside temperature in our bedroom was eight degrees celsius mm -hmm. which apparently is not safe it's yeah you feel like you're squatting terrible. in your own home <laughs> yeah you kind of feel like you're living in this shack um the walls are paper thin and it's just cold i had chill blains, so it was just a bit of a nightmare and we've heard other people struggling the same way we, we only felt comfortable for around four months the whole year so if you do move to Valencia, you need to have a house with aircon, mm -hmm. ideally with heating, and you really need to look for a place that is maybe better insulated and not just kind of paper thin. And I think that's very difficult because most buildings are built badly. Yeah. And of course, not everybody's gonna have this experience. I'm sure there's plenty of people, and we do know people who have uh, better quality houses than us, but it is kind of a common, common knowledge that a lot of people know that the, the quality isn't the best but like if you are coming there for the sun and whatever you can still have that but just make sure that you get your housing situation sorted because otherwise you're going to be pretty miserable in your own home so just make sure that you solve that and then probably won't be a problem for you and this leads us to the next con which is the bad housing market when it comes to renting and what we mean is whenever you do move to Spain as an expat, especially without a Spanish work contract, if you are a digital nomad or just you work abroad or even if you're retired, I think if you don't have that contract, you will have a hard time finding an apartment. Um, most landlords want to make uh, non-payment insurance mm -hmm. and you don't qualify for that without that contract even when you register self-employed like we did there's not normally i think a period of three months that you have to wait to qualify so you're a bit in the pickle a lot of people tell you that you should offer six or t uh, 12 months in advance um, rent payment but that didn't work for us we, mm -hmm. we offered six months they didn't want us to be the tenants unless we had that insurance and I think it's getting worse um, there were some people viewing our apartment in the end and they said that they had a contract but they were still asked for 12 months rent in advance mm -hmm. and it's just so difficult we've actually rented in so many other places in the world and we never had a problem like that yeah. we were ready to give up and I think there's other people like that so if your budget is not super super high then you might have a problem finding an apartment in Valencia. That's something to really think about. We heard about it, but thought, oh, it'll be fine. We'll find something, <laughs> we'll always find something. We did in the end, but it was the last day and we ended up having to take an apartment that wasn't really a perfect choice. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and also if you have a pet, that's a bit difficult too, to find mm -hmm. an apartment. It seems like, especially if you have a dog. Yeah. So that's something you need to take into consideration. Somehow, the higher your budget, if you can raise it, then it will be easier. I feel like most of the people who come, they're retired, they have a lot of money, or even if you want to buy a place, you might not have the same experience as somebody like us trying to rent. But we know a lot of people, we were in a couple Facebook groups, as I mentioned, and there would be posts almost every week, multiple people yeah. looking for apartments and having the same problem as us. Of course, again, not everybody's gonna have the same issue as us, but it is a common known thing in Valencia that it can be a little bit difficult to find a place. And another thing to think about when it comes to that is that there are a lot of agents connected to these apartments that you wanna rent. Even if you hire someone yourself, they might not be the most helpful, unfortunately. It's kind yeah, of this that was theme with um, <laughs> real estate agents. They just kind of collect the fee in the end, but they don't really do much. One month. <laughs> Yeah, which is a lot of money for kind of having to run after them, beg them to give you this apartment. That's also why we didn't want to move again within Spain, because mm -hmm. we just didn't want to deal with this rental nightmare again. Yeah, definitely not. This also leads us to the next point a little bit. <laughs> they all again, lead into they're another all a bit another. intertwined. Just like it's a hassle to find an apartment in Valencia, it's also a hassle to do a lot of other things. When you move to Spain, you need your knee number, which is your tax number. Um, that's sometimes a big issue to get, especially even getting an appointment at the police station. Um, then in our case, Brandon's residency is tied to my residency. So that was a hassle. And we've done the same process in other European countries where it was a lot easier, where technically mm -hmm. the rules should be the same all across Europe. But in in Spain, everything's a bit more complicated. Um, the rules are not the same in every, I don't know, every city. Everything's just 
kind of taking a lot of time. There's a lot of steps to follow. Something that's pretty well known in Spain is that there's this manana attitude, which means like tomorrow, like everybody just wants to push it to the next day or whatever. It's, it's no big deal because it goes along with the relaxed lifestyle. Of course, that can be a pro, but it also can be a con when you're trying to get things done that are important. And that goes for lots of things, like just basic maintenance for your home. Yeah. Like we had a couple things that need to be fixed in our apartment and they never got fixed in the entire year we were there because things always get pushed and pushed and yeah, with any kind of bureaucracy and paperwork that often happens where you need something and then it's just like, oh yeah, it's coming soon and they'll give you no specific date in mind and if, if you need it done then, then it's kind of an issue. So something to think about. Yeah. So our next point, although it's a con, it's also technically a pro at the same time. It depends on who you ask completely. The next point is about Las Fallas. If you don't know Las Fallas, it is the biggest festival in Valencia. It is this festival where these giant statues, they're called Fallas. These big statues are built, they're these big pieces of artwork. And then at the end of the festival, these pieces are all burned down. It's this big celebration. They also have an art exhibition at the museum. We went to that together where they have all these mini Fias and these and these medium sized ones that you can vote for. It's your a cool favorite festival. statue. Yeah, it's really cool, especially if it's your first year, maybe you will absolutely love it. We really enjoyed the festival the first time around, but if you are a resident for a while, and I think if you talk to a lot of residents, they often leave the city when Las Vegas goes on because the fireworks, that's another thing that goes hand in hand with Las Vegas is fireworks. There are fireworks all day and all night. We actually even have a clip that we can reference where there was just fireworks nonstop, explosions yeah. during explosions, the day. Explosions, explosions, all the time. And if you have a pet, especially, this can be an issue for you. A lot of people have dogs or cats that are scared of loud noises, so it can be a nightmare if you have an animal like that because it does go on for the entire month and especially the last two weeks of the festival are absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fireworks all day and night. So the artwork part of it is really cool, but the firework part, the loudness can be a little bit irritating, especially if you're like us, you work from home, yeah. it's kind of a pain. It's kind of hard to focus because it's just like yeah. all the time. And I think everyone should experience those fires mm -hmm. For sure. once, but when you do live there, for a long time, then I think it can be a bit bothersome mm -hmm. to have to do it every year over and over again. Yeah. And that's why it's maybe a con for us. Something that is a very important point for us is the flight availability in Valencia. Because we are obviously people who travel a lot. We have a travel channel on YouTube now. And we need to have the opportunity to go to a bunch of places in Europe whenever we want. And obviously, there's plenty of flights from Valencia, there's Ryanair, there's other cheap airlines. So there are a lot of options. And especially if you come from the States, mm -hmm. then you would think there's plenty of places you can fly to for very cheaply. But in comparison to some other places that we've lived at, we, we lived in Berlin and Budapest, it's just not as much. There's certain days that you would have to go. There's, there's certain flights that only go on certain dates and then you're a bit tied down to mm -hmm. you're very restricted. certain dates, especially if you have a pet that might be a problem for you or if you, have, if you do have work and you have to return to your job. And also something to keep in mind is that flights in the summer are very expensive. Um, in other cities if you live, for example in Berlin, in the summer you can go places and it's not necessarily more expensive, maybe a little bit, but in Valencia it's very much more expensive because all the tourists are coming to Valencia they're all coming from the UK or other places to vacation. And therefore, if you want to go away during that time, which a lot of people do in August, the prices are just very high. So you can only really travel a lot in the winter. And that's a big restriction for us. Yeah, that goes along as well with the bus and the train travel. Yeah. If you're an American or if you're some other places, maybe you would think that it's not that expensive. But when you compare it to other places that we've lived, like in Hungary or Berlin, we used to get some train rides and bus rides that were only like five to 10 euros. And yeah. here we typically spend at least 50 double for, or triple that. Train. Yeah, the trains especially, like even just the short train between Madrid and Valencia, which is only two and a half hours can cost 
one and a half. It can cost like at least 70 euros sometimes. It's not a, the end of the world or anything like no. that, but for us, people who travel frequently, it's definitely something that we consider a little bit of a con at least. So our final point, and this is again something that's not even that big of a deal, but for us, it is small con, is that there's not that many live events, music, and uh, festivals. Yeah, compared to other places that we've lived, there's not really that much that goes on, honestly. No. Yeah, and we go to rock concerts especially on a regular basis. And there were a couple that came when we were living there, but if you want to see bigger bands, if you're, I don't know, into especially like maybe pop or hip hop, like all these major kind of artists, I don't think they often come to Valencia or Spain in general. Yeah, if a band plays in Europe, they normally have a bunch of German dates or um, Dutch, French, Dates, but Spain normally gets maybe Madrid and Barcelona yeah. and not even all the time and then you have to go to Madrid to go to a concert all the time and that's kind of a pain because technically going to rock concerts is one of our favorite things to do mm -hmm. besides traveling and there was just not so many concerts to but, go to last yeah. year for us and not even yeah. just that like any kind of festival in general. When we were living in Berlin, and of course, yes, Berlin's a bigger city, a more major city, there was all sorts of festivals, food festivals, like we went to a Japanese one, there was a Korean one, street food festivals, and there wasn't really that much of that in Valencia. There was a Christmas market at Christmas time, but oh, it was also It was the pretty... worst, sorry, the worst Christmas market ever yeah, that I've seen in my life. I'm sure people are going to get mad at that too, but it was, no, yeah, it was pretty bad. But I mean, come on, if you like the Christmas market in Valencia, you have to go to some other places yeah, like Austria, Germany. Yeah. The, the Christmas market in Valencia is a bit it's sad. Lacking. Yeah. You can add that on the con list. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that is definitely not a game changer. I'm sure for a lot of people, that's not even going to be remotely on your list, especially maybe if you have families, you, you're retired, you probably don't even care about that at all. So again, just something for us personally that has to do with our lifestyle. So this was a list of pros and cons. Please don't destroy us because we said we didn't like something. Obviously, we like Valencia. We loved living there. And we also think it's a great option for families, for retired people and people who just want to enjoy their life and relax. I think if you're like us and you may be a bit younger, who wants to go to events and travel more and maybe you don't have that much money, maybe you're a digital nomad like us, then maybe Valencia could be not the best choice. It's still a really cool place. Again, overall, really beautiful city. We did enjoy our time there and I would recommend anybody at least come and check it out, especially just check it out before you decide to move there. We didn't actually do that. We kind of moved there blindly, but I think we maybe we would have still moved anyways. Cause I it think is, so, yeah. yeah it, it was worth a, a try for us, but there are just places that we prefer more. Yeah, so we course, don't regret moving there. No, not at all. But it's, it was definitely worth a shot, but for the kind of lifestyle that we're into, it wasn't exactly for us, but I can definitely see how a lot of people love it. There's plenty of people that are absolutely in love with it. It's their, their favorite place, and you might be one of those people. So yeah. just take whatever we say with a grain of salt, uh, try it out for yourself, see if you like it. We hope that our list of pros and cons has helped you a little bit. Maybe you want to move to Valencia, and now you know Valencia is exactly the place you want to move to, or maybe you learn some things that make you want to learn a bit more before you move. Yeah, and if you want to do that, make sure that you check out our other video because I think it does exactly. a pretty good job of showing the city, showing kind of some of the main sites and the food. So you should definitely check that out. But for now, I think that this video is over. So if you did like it, please give it a like. Subscribe. Please subscribe and definitely share your thoughts in the yeah. comments. Tell if us. If you live in Valencia, leave yeah. a comment or if you've been there, if you want to move. Yeah, and of course, if you have any questions about Valencia or living in Valencia, feel free to ask us. We will do our best to answer them as well. Yeah. Now, this is the end of the city. Yeah. See you next week. Bye.